Hi everybody, I'm Sandy from The Fashion Girls. So, I know you haven't heard from us in a long time, and we apologize. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody that's coming up, the, the New Year's. And um, so we're doing a little something different. Uh, I am going to continue on with Yarn Craft Country. So, uh, knitting has been a whole big uh, thing these days. Uh, knitting really caught on because it's just such a lost art. Nobody has time to do anything. I found out in the last couple months because we haven't been on, so we apologize. Uh, we haven't been on for about two or three months. We took a little break. Stacy was having some hearing issues going on, which we're trying to get rectified. And um, we just needed some time with the holidays and everything. So starting this year, we're going to do a whole lot of different things. We're still going to do our boxes and everything else, our, you know, things like that, um, with a, a lot of new things in between. So today's episode is yarn craft country so as you can see the sweater that i have on is from maurice's stacy and i bought these for around 39 dollars on sale and they have the beautiful little christmas trees on wouldn't you love to make a sweater like this and you're going you're probably saying to yourself oh yeah right like i can never do that well as you go on through years or sometimes even months of knitting, um, you can learn to do different patterns, things like that. Don't panic. What we're doing is we are going to start from scratch and we're going to learn to knit. Okay. I have been knitting for a little while. Um, I'm not a beginner. Um, I'm sort of a little bit, it's called beginner or advanced beginner, and then there's intermediate and experienced or however you want to go. I'm just doing, uh, kind of a little bit into the advanced, uh, you know, the beginner advanced, if that's what you want to call it. So today's basic, uh, thing is our introduction to knitting. Okay, so, um, yeah, knitting I found out through the last, oh, two months with a lot of things going on. I very much so, I like to, re that's how I relax. I knit. I let my hands do the work for me. So, um, I originally crochet. Okay, so I am, yeah, I am kind of an experienced um, or intermediate crocheter. Uh, but I myself aren't going to learn different things along with you. So, and since we're called the fashion girls, we are going to make fashion. We're making our own fashion with, with knitting, with learning to knit. So, as we go down the list, I have a list here. Um, like I said, the popularity of knitting has exploded. There, men knit, women knit children knit um you know your best i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you right now your best resource um for knitting is the internet and youtube you will learn a wealth of information on there um so just let me i'm waiting for a phone call so if i have to get this in ahead of time i apologize okay so that's the popularity. It's, you can start very cheaply. Uh, the supplies list. You will need a pair of knitting needles. Now, these are my straight knitting needles that I have. You don't need all of these. I have, I will probably start out with. You will find out the sizes. This is, I believe, a size 10. Now, if you're not sure, these are, these are metal. As you see, I have plastic ones, which are by boy. I like knitting with the plastic ones. 
Um, I just, they're, they're not so heavy, a little bit heavy in my hands. Um, they're very easy to work with. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to throw my knitting needles down there. You don't have to have all those sizes. And I will give you, I'll tell you right now, if you go into a store, any craft store or Walmart or anything like that, you will find a kit out there that will say it's a learn to knit kit. You will get knitting needles, which you need. You will probably get low plastic sewing needles to sew seams together. You'll get knitting needles. You will need some kind of tape measure because you're going to have to measure if you're making sweaters or if you want to make a hat or something like that. Okay. And then later on down the road, I have this cute little thing that I made up. They're little rings. They're markers to put over your, um, your knitting needles when you get more involved these are stitch holders to make cables so i'm not going to overwhelm you you don't need all of this stuff if you just have a tape measure laying around a set of knitting needles again these are size 10 and a little set of hooks um actually if you if these are a little worn off on the end, um, I believe, yeah, it does. I believe it says US 10. Stacy, mm -hmm. who is sitting in the background, my cohort to the fashion girls. Can you get me that gauge, that, that red metal gauge in the basket there for me, which I forgot to bring over. This is one thing that you should have because if you're not quite sure on the sizing, thank you. Okay, this is by Susan Bates. It's called Knit Check. And there's a whole thing about gauging. Okay, gauging is so many stitches per inch. Okay, we will get into that. Okay, it's, it's major, but then it's not major. But here is your little guide. It looks exactly like this. I'm off kilter. Now, why well, I said I wasn't sure the size. I believe this is a 10. There's little holes here that have the, ten, the millimeters. Okay, and the US size. So if I put this in the hole here, it goes down through. Nothing to spare. That is a size 10, US 10. Yeah. That's a US 10, okay? This one doesn't show the millimeters, but it's a size 10 and let me see. Oh my Lord. I believe that's eight millimeter. It's probably right. I will double check on that. I'm sorry, they're so old, I can't read them. Okay, as long as you go by the U.S. size, it's a U.S. 10. Okay, so we're going to start with these. Now, which kind of needles are better for you to start with? There are bamboo needles. They're the wooden needles. You can start with them. They're not as slippery as the, uh, the aluminum needles. Okay, so when you're first starting, that might make a difference for you. When I was saying about learn to knit kits, this is a learn to knit book. Okay, I think I paid, it says Walmart 584. Okay, American School of Needlework. You can get a book, needles, and a few things, and a whole kit. And what I was saying before, at a craft store, Walmart, areas like that. Um... It has lessons in here. Lesson four. It has all kinds of things like that. This is a really, really good book. I don't know if they make it anymore, but any learn to knit book with lessons in something like this would be really, really great for you to have on hand. Okay. Yarn types. Now, I'm, I'm not filling you with all this information. I just am showing you the basics for right now. Yarn types. 
this is your basic number four worsted weight yarn. Okay, this is in purple. And yes, the color looks a little different. It's not as bright. It's more of a light lavender. Okay, so this is, this is a very nice lightweight yarn. You, there are many charts out there. What ply yarn is suggested with which needle? Okay, and I'll go through that then with you. This is a bulky weight yarn. This is my favorite that I like to knit with, which is the Lion Brand Homespun Yarn. It makes everything nice and fluffy and cozy. However, if you're just beginning, see it's like a loopy kind of yarn. If you're just beginning, this is a bulky number five yarn, okay? And then you have your lightweight yarns, which is very much thinner. I like, I like to knit with this one, with the bulky yarn. But I'm just gonna show you Oops, excuse me. That's one way to kill your eyes. So be very careful. <laughs> you know us. We're just whatever. Okay. So I'm going to show you on here. This is another one. I like to use the Red Heart yarn, Coates and Clark Red Heart. This is a pretty color. A lot of them have patterns on here. This is called Icelandic. We're going to do a hat out of this one later on, okay? Um, it will tell you on here most of the time. Let me see. Okay. It will, let me see where it says on here. It's very hard to see, but right here. Number four, look on your yarn. That is a four. That is your worsted weight yarn. Okay, that's number four. It'll say five for bulky, three for uh, like light, uh, light yarn. Um, one is like a cotton thread. So check the size of the yarn when you're looking at a pattern. Um, the suggested needle weight for this, for there's a crocheting needle. Knitting needle is suggested knitting needle is eight US or five millimeter. So if you look here, that's your crochet needle. That's your, that's your knitting needle. Okay. That's only suggested. And I'm going to show you, I get a little bit away from that. Um, but it's suggested and it'll tell you, you know, on, uh, how to wash it. Um, you know, what's in it. This is 100% acrylic. What I like about it, it's still a nice soft yarn. Okay. It's not a scratchy yarn. So, and this is, this runs about maybe $6.97. I want to say this is jumbo. It's 10 ounces because it's multicolored. So I like, I really, really like, um, knitting with this kind of yarn. Um, when it's saying suggested kinds of needles, we're going to do patterns that I'll get more in, into that. Okay. As far as the suggested type of needles, but they're kind of there. If you go out there, there are tons and tons and tons of different brands of yarns. Um, I like loops and threads yarn, uh, which is from, impe it's impeccable loops and threads, and that's from Michaels. I like their brand of yarn, and um, there's gloves that we're going to be knitting. In fact, our first project that we're going to do are going to be gloves, okay? Um, so I'll show you the different kinds of gloves that we have. Uh, let me see. Stacy, excuse me one second. So Stacy bought me a bag for Christmas. Now, when I was saying about different sizes, your gauge sizes, which is if it calls for uh, like four stitches per inch, that's the gauge that you should have. So if it's saying 16 inches for four inches, that's four stitches an inch. So take 16 divided by four. Most watches are four by four. Okay. 
But if you get confused with that, we'll get into that even more. When I was saying about gauges, these both gloves were done on a size US 13. I love to use big needles, chunky yarns, regular yarns. Now I'm gonna show you the difference, okay? For instance, this is what we're gonna make. These are thumbless gloves or fingerless gloves. I'm sorry, not thumbless, fingerless gloves. Okay, this is made with that nice bulky homespun yarn. It's nice and soft, has a little bit of a ribbing here, which is hard to see because it's chunky, which is knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And the rest is all in a stockinette stitch. Okay, if I put it on, it's just sewed up. It's made in one piece and sewed up in a side seam. So here is your fingerless glove. Very, very simple to do. Simple first project to do, which that's what we're going to do. Not on this yarn. This is for when you get to learn to knit a little bit better, okay? However, I only knitted one of these because this is what we're going to do it on. Is regular, that's a five bulky yarn. This is for Coates and Clark wasted yarn. Or, or worsted yarn, I should say. Now, you see the difference in the size, okay? These are more bulkier, and that's what I'm talking about, your gauge, because it depends on the size of needle and the gauge of the yarn. Obviously, this you're gonna get more stitches. This is done with 24 stitches, and I believe this one is done with 42. I have to look it up on my phone. This, this one here is kind of, my own this one here is my own pattern and this one i will link the pattern when we get to do it okay so this one you can see the ribbing much better which is right here this is a knit row a pearl row and these that's that you're doing two rows of pearl and that's your nibbing, ribbing at the bottom so that it stretches for your wrist, okay? And look how pretty those stitches are. This is called the stockinette stitch, and they're Vs. Do you see the V? It looks like a V. So that's knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row. That is your basic stitch most people do for knitted patterns. There are tons and tons of stitches out there. But that is sort of your basic stitch, okay? So, with this one, if I put it on, I just sewed up the side, left the, uh, left the hole there. And these make a wonderful pair of driving gloves. Look at them. I have little buttons. I'm going to put little buttons on these. So they make a cute little pair of driving, fingerless driving gloves. I'm going to knit the other one along with you guys. And these were done on, on number 13, a size 13, because of how big the, see how big the stitches are? And I'm only doing that so that you guys can get used to knitting. Okay, so... You know, I'll do them on 13, or we can do them on, you can do them on a 10 if you like. It, it, there will not be, as far as stitch-wise, you might have to go a little bit longer, not wider, but longer, with, with a size 10. I'll finish it, we'll do them on 13, okay? So that's that one. All right. So... That's just explaining everything to you a little bit about on how to start the yarn, different types of yarn, the knitting needles that you need. There are tons of books out there, okay? Um, I have so many knitting books, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I print sheets off. I'm going to show you this book. This is called Sandy's Knit and Crochet Book. I just took a notebook, put a cover on it, 
And as you can tell here, I printed, this is what I did. I printed off, took the clear sheets, printed from the internet. A lot of these are crochet patterns. Some are, and there's knit patterns in, in between there. Um, I printed, go on Lion Brand Yarn, go on uh, Yarnspirations, uh, there's a nice sweater. Uh, you know, there's tons and tons of patterns, again, like I said, that you can find on the internet. Okay, so that's, that's what I do. Yes, you can buy tons. I have collected tons and tons of yarn books over my lifetime. Uh, uh, needlework books. But again, your best bet is definitely getting it off of the internet. Um, you know, like I said, the internet is a wealth of information. Tons of YouTube videos out there. That's why I'm making a YouTube video because I'm tr gonna try and explain things a little bit different or a little bit better than, um, you know, than everybody else. Um, so, uh, okay, so I think what I'm going to do right now, I'm running into like 21 minutes, um, 21 minutes here. Uh, so, there's tons of different ways on how to cast on your stitches. So, I'm going to take another thing. When you're buying yarn, uh, some yarn will come out of here very nicely, and that's stuck, and some yarn won't. So, it's round, coming out of the round here. Sit and roll it into a ball. Very simple. Uh, you know, I'm not going to bore you to death with rolling it into a ball right now, but that's really what you should do. Okay, I'm leaving a tail, it's called a tail, yes, okay. I'm leaving a tail on how many stitches that you want to put on your needle. Now, they claim if you want to, uh, if you want to figure out how many stitches, there's a lot of different ways that you can get stitches from a tail. If you're putting on 20 stitches, they're saying, you know, just think arm lengths like, like this. Okay, that's one. That's, that's 20. That's 30. This is what a lot of people do. Okay, me, sometimes I just wing it. But this is called your tail. We're only going to start out with 10 stitches. So what you want to do is you want to make, just make a slip knot. So to make a slip knot is one, two, okay. Yeah. Here's how you make a slip knot. Everybody, like some people make this so complicated. Just put it around your finger once. Okay. Every, put this through the middle here. Pull this through. Do you see this? There's your slip knot. I'm sure a lot of people know how to make a slip knot. Okay. This it's not rocket science. I'm taking my size 10 needles, putting it on the needle and you want to tighten it a little bit, but you don't want to make it too, too tight. All right. Now we're doing th something it's called casting on. All right. So, Technically, this is your working yarn here, and this is your stationary yarn, okay? So, I hold this in my hand. A lot of people wrap it around their finger like this, go like this, okay? So, that's the easiest way to do that. How did I do that? You want, you want to make sure you want your working yarn up here at the top. And this is your stationary yarn. Okay. So, again, you're taking your hand. You're taking your, your the yarn in your hands like this. Okay. You're only wrap your, your, your fingers going actually like, let's see, like that. 
you see it makes an X, you're going right here. There's another cast on. You're taking your yarn here, see like an X right there, and you're making another cast on. Your stationary yarn or your tail to seam up is going to be down here at the end. I like doing it this way so that you don't have to measure out 20 million tons of yarn. All right. Again, you're holding it in your hand like this. You're only wrapping it. You're, you're putting your finger around like that into an X. Like this. See? Again, yarn around your finger like that. Now, my aunt used to do something that taught me how to do also with yarn. That was easy. All she did was, was she took her four fingers, she wrapped it one, two. She put it like that, and there you go. If you look online, there are so, so many ways how to cast on. So I'm not going to... And don't do it tight because you won't get the, it will be too tight to get your needle through. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, see, ten. Not that bad. You want to make sure your tail is down here and your working yarn is left up here. Okay. Now, that's the beginning. You have your yarn on the needle. Pick up your next needle. Now, I'm going to try and do this because I'm working in the opposite direction. I apologize. I don't have an overhead camera like everybody else has. So we're going to try and do this together. So as you can see here, you'll have your first needle. You're taking, you're taking this needle. This is going to be hard. I know it is. Okay. You're taking your needle into the side and you're putting it toward the back. Now see, you're seeing the back there. Okay. So this is the back part of it. So what you're doing is, and I'm going to turn you around a little bit, like this way. You're taking your needle, you're putting it in your loop, and you're putting it toward the back, which you see my hand. Hmm. Okay. Now. You're making, you're actually, what you're doing is, it's in the back, you're making an X. Okay? So, you're putting your needle toward the back, and we're making an X. So, I'm going to turn around this way, it'll probably be better for you. There you go. You're making an X. And this is, this is your working loop, your, your working thread. So, you want to go around the needle, hold it, and bring it back. And then you, you'll you see this loop that you just made. You're going to come down. Now you have the loop on that needle. Now you just want to slip that one off. And you'll end up with something that looks like that. Okay? Let's try another one. I hold it with that. A lot of people find it awkward at first. You don't have to. You can just leave as long as your yarn is to the back. Again, you're putting your needle in the side. You're, you're putting it in the loop. You're crossing your needle to the back. Okay. You're crossing your needle to the back. You're putting this, you're wrapping this around from the forward to the back. 
you're like that. That's the loop you just made. You're coming, catching the loop, and you take it off. You just knitted two. Let's do that again. You're putting your needle to the back. Around, bring your yarn around the needle. You have the one you just made and you're bringing it through. And make sure you always push that one off because if not, you will end up with extra loops. Okay? Again, put your needle, put your needle in here in the loop to the back. Put that around to make your loop. Make sure you keep that yarn to the back. Hold it like that to the side. You have your ex your loop you just made. Come down. You have your loop on your needle. And you're pushing that one off. Okay. So let's finish that. I promise next time I'll have a different setup. So we're gonna finish, we're gonna finish knitting that. Okay, so bring it around, down, and off. Your first row, you will have that line because it's a little awkward. Again, there are lots of other methods, casting on, doing your, you know, to do the knitting. People will show you lots and lots of different ways. To me, you know, to show you, that's the easiest right now. So we're just going to finish, we're going to finish this row. I haven't knitted with little needles for a while. I've been using a lot of big needles. So. Okay. Now, we finished that row. Oops, and I just dropped my needle because I'm all thumbs today. Okay, now your top your top knit, knitted loop is always going to be a little loose. Okay, let's try the second row. All right, so what you're going to do is, again, when you just do knit rows, that's called the garter stitch. That is just the simplest stitch, simplest thing until you get the handle of knitting. I'm not throwing pearl right on you right now. That's going to be another video. I'm just showing you how to knit to get the feel of people that have never knitted. Okay, everybody. I am so sorry. My uh, I was using my tablet. And it got full on me, so I have to do a whole lot of reorganization before our next video. So, where I left off was, we were, we were knitting our knit stitch. As you could tell, like I was showing you before, that's just knit, okay? That's called the garter stitch. So, I'm going to do one more row here to show you quick. Um, again the working part of the yarn okay so again I'm turning around this way you you are putting it in let me see here okay you're putting it in here to the back okay you're putting it taking the working part of the yarn from the back Go around the left needle. You're bringing it like this. You're coming down. So that this is toward the front. And you're pushing that one off. And there's your stitch. Now again, you want to keep pull that a little bit to keep your tension going. Okay? Again, you're crossing into the back. It goes around your left needle front to back. To the, then you're coming down and you're slipping that one off again front to back 
you have that X. See? You're going around this needle, around the left needle. Okay? Down and up. Okay, so I'm going to come back around. And this is how it looks from the front. So basically, you're going in. You're making a cross like that. You're going around from front to back. You can see that. You're going front to back. Like that. You're bringing that. You're coming down. And you have the two. You're slipping that off. Actually, it looks better this way, easier. So, again, you're going into the front and you're making an X. Okay? You're taking your working yarn. This is the back. You're going around to the front, around. Bringing your needles like that. You have your two, your two on here. This is the one that you're bringing forward. You're going down like that you're getting your loop and you're pushing that one off okay so I'm gonna finish these and this is just a simple knit stitch you can you can keep like I said you can keep going like this you can uh, make a scarf or anything you like out of it so I'm not going to keep you much longer with this all right so, now you'll see a little loop there. I split the skein. I split through the yarn. Be careful that you don't do that. And as you can tell, that is called the garter stitch right there. Okay, that's the garter stitch. And it makes a nice little ribbed pattern. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do the pearl right now. I don't want to confuse you. It was the first video, and that's just the knit stitch. Okay, so you can keep going on. I'll show you how to, to bind off, which is very simple with the knit stitch, to get it off. So to take it off the needle, you're just going to, you're going to knit, knit one. You're going to knit two. Now, you have two loops on here. You're going to take the first loop. You're going to take your needle. You're going to go down in. Actually, this is, this is how I do it because sometimes it's just too tedious. You have your two loops. You want to take the first loop. I just pick it up with my fingernails. Take the first loop. You're going to put it over the second loop, through, and then you have one on there. Keep that one on. Okay, we're going to knit another one. So you have two loops. Okay, so what you're doing is then you're going to take this loop, you're putting it over, and you're bringing that one through. That's how to bind off, and you do that loosely. Because if you don't do it loosely, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to drop everything too, too tight. Tension is the key to everything. You have that loop there, so you want to go down in or take your fingers, which I like to do. Just bring it through like this. Bring your loop through. There you go. Okay, and you see how it's binding off? So, we're going to finish that. Okay. And there's lots of ways to binding off, too. There, again, there's so, so many different ways that you could do this. You know, I'm doing it almost like a crocheting kind of direction. This is the way I'm doing it. Again, look for yourself. Um, there's there's tons of tons and tons of ways um, that you could bind off.
that's how I do it too. Sometimes I just take it and slip it over with my fingers. Sometimes I take it with the needle, you know, and sometimes I just do it this way. Okay, so I have my two on there. And you're left with that. So it's off the needle. And that's, that's your little piece that you just made. And then all you want to do is you want to cut this end right here. And you want to make, you just want to make a knot on the end on that loop. This is your working piece. This is always good if you're sewing up the end of a hat or whatever. So that's the, that's kind of like a little piece of swatch there that I made. And that's your garter stitch. See, look, right there is your garter stitch. It makes a cute little design. You can make a whole sweater. And that's the garter stitch. That's only knit stitches. You're only knitting. That's it, period. Just knitting. Okay? So, I'm going to put that down for right now. I am so sorry that this video <laughs> did not quite come out like I had planned. So, the next video I promise you will be a lot better. Um, and we'll have it a lot more... Um, uh, more precise for you on the way we're knitting. So please don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the fashion girls, Sandy and Stacy. And um, if you stick with me, I'll teach you how to knit, how to purl, and we'll be making gloves in no time. Okay, so this is just literally part one on knit. Um, the next one, I'll just do a little review and we'll do some pearl stitches. Okay, so uh, just please be kind. I'm sorry. It's the first time that we're trying to do this uh, for you. So I won't keep you any longer. Get your, get your knitting needles and your yarn and start knitting because it is very relaxing while you're doing TV. Even if you just learn the knit stitch that I just showed you. Okay, so that's all for now. And again, hit the like button, subscribe, the little notification bell. We'll have more clothing coming. Um, you know, we'll have more Disney things coming. We have our big announcement at the beginning of the year about Disney on what we're doing and um, more of Yarn Craft Country. So I'm Sandy and bye-bye for now. Thanks for watching.